I'm Mark Matsumoto and welcome to my Tokyo kitchen. Today I'm going to show you how to make this mouth-watering Japanese sweet and sour chicken. It's super easy and perfect for packing into a bento, so stick around. Kurozuan literally means black vinegar sauce and it's become a popular Chinese-inspired sweet and sour sauce in Japan. This dish, made with chicken and a rainbow of veggies, was created by the Japanese restaurant chain Otoya, and it's since become a household staple here. I make mine with karaage chicken and I flash fry the veggies to preserve their color and texture. This makes them look like little gems after they're glazed with the sauce, and it's a brilliant addition to a bento box lunch. Sound good? Let's take a look at our ingredients. For the chicken, I've got 350 grams of skin-on thigh meat, one tablespoon of soy sauce, one tablespoon of sake, one teaspoon of grated ginger, and a third cup of potato starch. For the veggies, I'm using 100 grams each of Japanese eggplant, lotus root, sweet potato, carrot, and a mild green pepper like Anaheim or bell peppers. For the sweet and sour sauce, I have three tablespoons of sake, three tablespoons of sugar, two tablespoons of soy sauce, three tablespoons of black vinegar, and one tablespoon of rice vinegar. To prep the chicken, I'm gonna start by trimming off any excess fat or connective tissue, and then I'm gonna cut the chicken up into large bite-sized pieces. I like using skin on chicken thigh because it has the most flavor and it'll stay nice and juicy. But you can also do this with chicken breast or you can make it plant based with tofu. If you want to try it out, go watch my tofu karaage video. Now we want to season the chicken with soy sauce, sake, and the grated ginger. Mix this together and ideally you want to let this marinate in the fridge for a few hours but even 10 minutes is better than nothing. To prepare the eggplant, I'm gonna trim off the top and then I'm gonna slice it into an oblique cut by holding the knife at a 45 degree angle to the eggplant and turning it a quarter turn between each cut. This ensures each piece is about the same thickness. For the lotus root, you wanna prepare some acidified water. I'm using lemons, but vinegar will work as well. Now I'm going to peel the lotus root. Despite its name, this is actually a rhizome of the lotus plant, and it has a marvelous crispy texture that kind of reminds me of sunchokes or water chestnut. Be sure to keep it in the acidified water when you're not handling it to keep it from discoloring. Now I'm going to slice it up into rounds that are about a quarter inch thick. Then I'm going to soak them in the lemon water. For the carrots, I'm also going to cut these into an oblique cut. By the way, this cut is called rangiri in Japanese, and it's a popular way to cut cylindrical vegetables. Next, I'm going to cut up the sweet potato the same way. This is a Japanese sweet potato which has magenta skin and the flesh turns golden when it's cooked. For the peppers, I like to slice along the indentations first. This divides it up into segments that can be pulled apart like this. As you can see, the white membranes that the seeds are attached to are right where we segmented the pepper. This makes them a lot easier to cut out. Now I'm just going to cut these peppers into bite-sized pieces. Okay, our prep is done, so let's preheat about an inch of vegetable oil in a pot with high sides to 340 degrees Fahrenheit or 170 degrees Celsius. You also want to prepare a large cooling rack by layering on a few sheets of paper towels. Then we need to dry off our lotus root with some more paper towels. Just line them up and press out as much water from them as you can so they don't spatter when we fry them. Then I'm going to give all the veggies, except the peppers, a light dusting of potato starch. The coating is going to help the sweet and sour sauce stick to the veggies, but you don't want to make it too thick or it's going to obscure their vibrant hues. 
Okay, the oil is up to temperature, so let's start with the peppers. These literally only take about 20 seconds, so stir them around a few times, and then get them out of the oil, and onto our prepared rack. Next, I'm gonna fry the eggplant. Once you've added them, make sure the skin side is down. The high temperature of the oil will set the purple color of the anthocyanins and keep them from going brown. Depending on the thickness of your eggplant, they should be cooked in about one and a half to two minutes. Once they're tender, drain these well and get them onto the paper towel lined rack. Next, I'm gonna fry up the lotus root. You want these to stay crisp, so they should only take about a minute to cook. Drain these on the paper towel lined rack and then I'm gonna go in with the sweet potatoes and carrots. These are gonna take the longest to cook through, so you wanna give them about three to four minutes. By the way, you don't have to use the exact same vegetables as me, and any veggie that'll fry up well and add some color and texture like zucchini, red onions, or kabocha will work. While we wait for these to fry, let's dust our chicken with potato starch. All you need to do is roll the pieces of marinated chicken around in the starch and use your fingertips to pinch them into balls so they're about the same thickness. Unlike the veggies, you want a nice thick coating of sweet and sour sauce on the chicken, so don't be stingy with the starch. Okay, our carrots and potatoes should be done, so let's get them onto our paper towel lined rack to drain. Now I'm gonna add our chicken and fry them up. This is literally my karage recipe, so you can also make a large batch one day and use the leftovers to make the sweet and sour chicken the next day. Be sure to flip the chicken over a few times so they brown evenly. After about four to five minutes, they should be golden brown and crisp like this. So get them out of the oil and you know the drill. These look and smell amazing already, but we're not quite done yet. Before we glaze these, I want to thank Musubi Kiln for sending over this beautiful plate that I'm going to use to serve this up. They've got a huge collection of handcrafted tableware that runs the gamut from classic to modern. So hit the link in the description down below to take a look and use coupon code NORECIPES to get 5% off your order. To glaze the chicken and veggies, I'm gonna add the sugar, sake, and soy sauce to a large pan and bring the mixture to a rolling boil. Once the sugar is dissolved and the sauce no longer smells like alcohol, add the black vinegar and rice vinegar and stir it in. Then I'm gonna add the chicken, and all those flash fried veggies into the black vinegar sweet and sour sauce. Now we just need to toss everything together to glaze them with the sauce. I usually just do this with the pan, but if you're not confident in your tossing skills, you can do this with two spatulas like you're tossing a salad. Once they're glazed, your sweet and sour chicken and veggies should end up looking something like this. So let's get this plated up. Nothing fancy here except for the plate, and as you can see, the colors of this dish are pretty striking. Okay, let's give this a try. Oh, look at that. It's glistening with that sweet and sour glaze, and it smells incredible. Itadakimasu! Oh, where am I gonna start? All right, I'm gonna go for the chicken first. <laughs> I don't know if you can hear that, but that potato starch coating on the outside of the chicken is still a little crispy and it's absorbed that glaze like a sponge. All right, I'm gonna try some eggplant next. It's silky smooth and creamy and it's absorbed all of that flavor from the sauce. All right, how about a little lotus root? 
<laughs> You've got those sweet, sour, and savory tastes with soft and creamy eggplant, juicy and crispy chicken. And those lotus roots add a nice crunch. It's like a party in your mouth in every bite and makes you want to go back for another one. <laughs> it's so good. Well, I'm gonna go pack the rest of this into some bento boxes with some rice. But check out this playlist for more Japanese home cooking and I'll catch you in the next one.